Korea's original equipment manufacturers and original development manufacturers are dominating global markets without having their own brands. How competitive are they? Korean manufacturers are facing a crisis amid an emergence of Chinese firms and a rapid growth in Japanese rivals. Where should Korea's manufacturing sector, sandwiched between China and Japan, head for? A new technology that can cancel noise from industrial sites and everyday life has been developed. What is the core principle of the new technology that uses a sound wave with an inverted phase of the noise? Smartphones enable users to easily access e-books and libraries. On top of this, it also reads your paper books. The smart library service evolves. Would you believe that some laborers in North Korea are paid much more than senior party officials? We will find out the truth about the rumor on North Korean laborers' wage system. Hello, I'm Andrew Salmon and welcome to BizLine. Now, in a world where brand value is increasingly being seen as the core value, is it feasible to be a successful company with an invisible brand? Actually, the answer is yes. Ralph Lauren and Nike are global powerhouses, but it's Korean companies which are doing much of their manufacturing. How are they doing it? Let's take a look. Original Equipment Manufacturers, OEM, and Original Development Manufacturers, ODM, are booming, having their second golden days. Original Equipment Manufacturing refers to manufacturing of complete products as demanded by purchasing companies using the brand name of the purchasing firms. Original Development Manufacturing refers to a manufacturing method in which subcontractors are responsible for both developing and manufacturing the products. Although OEMs and ODMs are not well known to the public, they have emerged as powerful players that aren't envious of prominent large companies with their strong production capacity, price competitiveness, and continued efforts to develop technologies. 일반적으로 OEM 업체라고 하면은 어, 브랜드를 가지고 있는 회사가 우리가 디자인한 제품을 원래 재료나 소재 그대로 똑같이 싸게 만들어 달라고 해서 하는 보통 저희가 있는 하청 회사의 수준이라고 보면 될것 같고요. 스스로 디자인도 조금 더 개발하고 거기에 소재나 재질 같은 것들 갖다가 좀 변화를 줘 가지고 제품 성능을 개선한다든지 그런 능력들이 생기게 되는데 그런 경우에는 브랜드 홀더들이 권한 이양을 해서 너네들이 디자인도 좀 해봐라 조금 소재를 개발해봐라 해서 ODM 업체를 좀 발전을 하게 됩니다. Haran Electronics is Korea's largest secure digital or SD card manufacturer, controlling about 14% of the global memory card market. The company exports memory cards used in smartphones, tablet PCs, and black boxes to the US, Europe, Southeast Asia, and Japan on an OEM and ODM basis. Haran Electronics 어, 해외 유명 업체 OEM과 ODM 방식으로 수출하고 있습니다. 전 세계 메모리 카드 점유율의 약 13% 정도 되는 양입니다. 국가별 수출 규모로는 미국과 유럽 그리고 동남아, 일본 순인데요. 어, 지난해 미국과 유럽은 전체 수출액의 43% 그리고 동남아는 약 31%, 일본은 약 6%를 차지했습니다. 올해부터는 동남아의 IT 붐이 불어 물량이 차츰 증가하는 추세를 보이고 있습니다. Haran Electronics products are sold to countries around the globe under the brand name of prominent overseas firms, including the world's top three memory makers. But their packages say made in Korea. Haran Electronics, which exports 80% of its output, isn't just satisfied with its success in the OEM market, it is further enhancing its competitiveness with endless development of technologies. It has recently launched the micro SD card that has a function of preventing data damage and provides increased lifespan of up to seven times. It is targeting the domestic market with its own brand, Gold Flash, which is gaining large popularity, already becoming the best-selling product in online shopping markets. 자체 브랜드인 골드 플래시에 대해서는 뛰어난 기술력과 품질력을 내세워 
글로벌 시장에 자체 브랜드로 진출할 예정입니다. 전 세계적으로 휴대 저장 장치가 스마트폰으로 일원화되고 있는 추세이기 때문에 스마트폰 용량을 늘릴 수 있는 고용량 마이크로 SD 카드로 우선 글로벌 시장을 넓혀 나갈 예정입니다. As global markets get narrower and more popular brands advance abroad, more and more products are manufactured without brands as OEM and ODM products. The sectors that stand out the most in Korea are textile and fashion, cosmetics, and IT. As fashion and trends change rapidly in Korea, companies are also moving quickly to develop and manufacture products. 우리나라가 고도 성장기에 그 대량 생산이라든가 이런 그 대규모로 어, 제품을 만들어서 선진국에 납품해봤던 경험이 상당히 많이 있었기 때문에 그거를 기반으로 해가지고 분야별로 그 화장품이라든가 핸드백이라든가 의류라든가 전자제품이라든가 이런데 그 많은 기업들이 나온 거라고 생각이 됩니다. In fact, Korea's leading apparel exporters are already reporting annual sales of more than 1 billion US dollars by selling products to famous overseas brands. Amid a strong consumer preference for high-end cosmetics brands, the cosmetics industry is growing sharply in line with an increase in specialized ODMs that invest a massive amount of money in researching new technologies. Winix emerged as one of the strongest players in the recently booming dehumidifier market, beating large Korean companies. Winix has been supplying dehumidifiers to domestic and overseas firms on OEM basis as well as producing its own brand products. As demand for dehumidifiers continued to increase, it stopped the OEM basis production and focused on production of its own brand. How did an OEM successfully launch its own brand? 삼성이라든지 LG라든지 뭐 샤프라든지 그런 데를 계속 부품 납품을 해왔는데 부품을 납품을 하면서 회사를 키우는 데는 그 성장의 한계가 있다고 판단을 하고 언젠가는 우리 브랜드를 꼭 만들겠다고 생각을 했었습니다. 처음에 이제 내온수기라는 제품을 만들어냈고 그 이후에 정수기, 공기청정기 그리고 제습기에 이르기까지 저희 자체 브랜드를 넓혀갔는데 그렇게 하다 보니까 회사의 그 성장에 큰 기여를 하게 되고 또 우리 자체 브랜드를 알리는 데 많은 도움이 됐던 것 같습니다. The secret is its technical know-how it has accumulated for more than 40 years by supplying products on an OEM basis. Winix dehumidifiers, which boast of its top-notch quality, were certified by the Korea Air Cleaning Association for the first time in Korea and remain as the best-selling dehumidifier brand, beating its larger rivals. 저희도 대기업에 OEM을 하다가 기술력을 인정을 받고 그 기술력을 바탕으로 우리 제품을 만들어내고 대기업을 제치고 국내 1위라는 그런 영광을 제가 가져올 수 있었던 거는 OEM에서 얻은 기술력을 우리가 잘 습득하고 그거를 제품에 녹여냈기 때문이라고 생각을 합니다. OEMs have been once treated as subcontractors, but they have emerged as a strong player in the manufacturing sector helped by their capabilities in research and development and product planning. With years of know-how in technologies and management skills, they are quickly expanding, even venturing into brand business. 아, 브랜드 홀더들에 비해서 어, 훨씬 더 경쟁력을 많이 갖추고 도저히 다른 그 OEM, ODM 업체를 육성시킬 수 없을 정도로 아주 전문화해서 나가든가 아니면 은 시장에서 그렇게 고도한 경쟁력을 갖추기가 힘든 경우에는 지금까지의 제조업을 바탕으로 해서 독자 브랜드를 개척한다든가 새로운 분야로 어, 비즈니스 라인을 확장하는 게 중요하다고 생각이 됩니다. OEMs and ODMs are drawing attention as an outsourcing trend in the distribution industry. They have started off as a nameless minor player, but are now promoting Korea to the world as a hidden power. We are looking forward to seeing what is in store for them next. Korea Inc. was built on metal bashing. Manufacturing continues to be the engine driving the economy forward. Indeed, Korea's top manufacturers, Samsung, LG, Hyundai, Kia, 8L, are now major global brands. However, internationally, the
countries manufacture as a sandwich between rising China and mighty Japan. Meanwhile at home, they're suffering from high costs, militant unionism, and as a result perhaps, are no longer investing heavily in their home country. So, where does manufacturing stand in Korea? To answer these questions, we have with us a professor from the Graduate School of Business Administration here at Sungyunbwan University. Dr. Kim Yong-jun, welcome to BizLine. Hi, Andy. Good to meet you. Good to now, meet you. let's first big picture. You know, the manufacturing sector here looks to the outsider to be pretty strong. Mm. The blue chips are doing pretty well in the market. Mm. Uh, Korea's continually registering trade surpluses. Um, it looks like a pretty healthy sector, no? Mm. It is. It is a yeah. pretty um, healthier sector for the Korean company, especially for the what is called the five. The top five. Yeah. Korean global companies are doing pretty good. Which and list those for me. Samsung right. Electronics, Postco, Steel. and the LG. LG Electronics. LG Electronics yeah. and the Hyundai Heavy Industry. Okay. Who are building a ship. ships? Yeah. Then the last one is that uh, Hyundai, Hyundai Motors. Motor Group. Sure. All well known. Very global companies. Yeah. Uh, they're the leading Korean uh, manufacturing industry. Korea is a ranked as a number five in terms of global manufacturing competitiveness. Only number five. I would have thought a little higher. No. Mm. Number one is China. Hmm. Ooh. That's number two is Germany. Okay. Number three is America. Number mm. four is Japan. And number five is South Korea. Okay. Number five is South Korea. So, but which is pretty good. But does that tell us the whole picture? You've talked about the top tiers. What about the second tiers? Yeah. Here we're talking about the sandwich phenomena. Mm. Have you tried a sandwich? Do you I've, like a sandwich? I've had a sandwich once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> once or twice? Yeah. Okay. Here, when we're talking about the sandwiches, we have the China yeah. with a low cost competitiveness, yeah. Japan and America in terms of the high technology, sure. right? But when you have a good sandwich, hmm. there's a two inside a component. One is a meat, whether okay. it is beef or turkey. Second component is a lot of ingredients, hmm. uh, vegetables hmm. and the things like that. In terms of comparing uh, the Korean corporations, uh, the manufacturing competitiveness, hmm. those are big blue chip five companies are meat. Yeah. Very good shape. Okay. However, those are ingredients and the vegetables and a lot of sources. The sources, the condiments, the smaller companies supplying the chebels, the component manufacturers, the vendors. What sort of shape are they? Okay, last uh, five or six years, Korean uh, trading uh, yeah. surpluses. Yeah. We got about 40 billion surpluses mm. from China. Mm. Those are five big corporations set up the manufacturing sectors in China, offshore, they import yeah. all the parts and uh, materials mm. from those medium corporations. So they're pretty healthy too. However, yeah. when the, those big private corporations competing against the Japan and the Chinese corporation, they squeezing down in terms of the cost. Mm. However, they didn't really come up with the innovative products mm. in the marketplace. Samsung Electronics they didn't really come up with a to beat Apple's iPhone mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. Hyundai Motors didn't really come up with a superb car to compete to Toyota True. yet. They're, I mean, they're good second movers. They're not quite first movers quite, yet, right? Quite first. As innovators. So yeah. they're squeezing down their cost. Yeah. They're squeezing down their the operation, which transferring to the those small, medium, second tier corporation, mm. which they didn't really have a power yeah. to build up their technical competence right. to compare Japanese and the Chinese corporation. Mm. Those are the major issues of a sandwich phenomenon. Okay, we'll come back to that in a moment. Mm. But let's just talk more about some um, local business factors. Korean workers, mm. no longer cheap, well-educated, hardworking, but not that cheap, mm. not that productive. Um, and there's pressure to raise their wages. Meanwhile, we've got a strong one. I mm. think that's gonna continue mm. for a while. What effect are these issues going to have on, on manufacturers? Yeah, let me share a little bit of the numbers in terms sure. of the the strong union power yeah. and the expensive uh, labor cost. Right. There is a terminology what is called unit labor cost. Okay. So, how much does it cost to produce, produce one product widget. for yeah. an hour? Yeah. Korea is 0.8. Okay. 
German and America is a 0.7. Mm. Japan is a 0.5. China is a 0.3. You're telling me that out of the top five manufacturers, Korea's are now the most expensive. Workers we have. Yeah. That's the fact. Okay. The second, in terms of the one yeah. impact, we seems like over the last 10 years we have a very weak one, yes. which is support export. exports. Sure, cheap exports. Yeah. However, there is a lot of a pressure, international global financial market, mm. they are asking to have strong one. Yeah. Therefore, and capital have, inflows, of course. Yeah, yeah. We, don't, we are not going to have the export competitiveness in, to in price terms. In terms of longer. the price. Okay. So those two factors are against manufacturing. Manufacturing, especially for the medium corporation. Big corporation, they already invest offshore. Yeah. So they have a little bit for of a flexibility. And yeah, they can hedge. Yeah. To hedge. Yeah. So that's the fact hmm. uh, in terms of the strong one. And uh, high costs. High cost of the Spe labor. Speaking of labor, as we just were, another issue which I think really worries particularly foreign investors mm. is that since democratization back in 1987, mm. there's been a perceived very, very powerful, very militant mm. union mm. Uh, movement here. Mm. My sense is that today, 2014, that perception is outdated and militant unionism is not as problematic mm. as it's believed to be. What's your mm. sense? Yeah, it's, I think it's coming from the, the global broadcasting. Yeah. They show all the demonstration right. of those uh, by five big corporations, except the red Samsung bands and the red yeah. bands. Yeah. Um, however, now Korean workers perceive mm. the global competitiveness, especially they're competing against Chinese corporation. So they need to cut down not only the cost, but also the productivity. They need to, to increase to raise it. Sure. productivity. Otherwise, corporation moving out of the country, mm. out of Korea. They, they say goodbye to Korea, mm. moving to China, Vietnam, and the Pakistan. Mm. Mm. Right? Those are the big trends which we observe. Sure. Korean workers are st start to notice that we see a lot of statistics, labor unions, mm they have, they perceive global competitiveness. So we're going to see more of a cooperative between labor management union and labor. And yeah. the management. You mentioned the trend of mm. offshoring. We're seeing Korean manufacturers set up in China, in Vietnam, in the USA, in Eastern Europe. You mm. just mentioned Pakistan. Mm. What would compel Korean manufacturers to start reinvesting here at home? Will it ever happen again? Uh, it requires a lot of uh, innovation yeah. of inside of the company. Mm. Uh, problem, the sandwich phenomena mm. are really not only limited to those small, medium corporations, yeah. large, big corporations competing in the global marketplaces. Over the last 10 years, mm -hmm. they've been pretty good. Mm. They enjoy sure. monopolist power and yeah, yeah. Uh, they own a lot of money. Mm. They got to invest on their process mm. to be innovative. Mm. Manufacturing is not a key issue of a core competencies for the global company. Mm. It should be innovation. Yeah. So manufacturing company transformed to innovative yeah. company Apple could be sure. Doesn't sustainable. Manufacture. Sure. Otherwise, they cannot compete in the global marketplace. Are you telling me now that Korea is moving into a post-industrial paradigm, which means that it's going to offshore its manufacturing? And increasingly, what remains in Korea will have to be high in value add, R and D, intellectual property creation, um, service, back office, and so forth. Yes, especially those um, medium, small medium corporation. They restarted up to catching up their innovative process yeah. to be globally competitive. They grown up as uh, dependent to those five big, big corporations sure. as a vendor. Yeah. Now they try to be independent, yeah. to be global. They invest on R&D. Yeah. They see the importance of the R&D as innovative process. What is the strategy for Koreans going forward? Clearly, President Park and here um, is really pushing uh, tight economic ties. Mm. Do Korean companies just need to keep investing, investing in China and build off the back of Chinese growth? I don't think so. 
Okay. I don't think that's the solution. Mm. Now those, the big corporations setting up their offshore investment, not yeah. only in China, but also in any Around of the, the coastal competitive mm. uh, marketplace. That's a very good. Those are big corporations to be competitive globally, mm. they got to have the Go global. Yeah, Go global. Global operations. Yeah. Okay. The issue confines to those small, medium corporation. Yeah. They don't have the power, money, people to go abroad yet. Mm. So inside of the Korea, what they got to do is they got to build up their innovation. Mm. To be a vendor, to be a, just a producer, they cannot be competitive to Chinese corporations or in global marketplaces. Mm. So they got to be innovative in local marketplaces. How are they going to do it? They got to invest on R&D. They got to have a good people to come up with an innovative process. Mm. But as you see, in Korean uh, economy, a lot of youngsters and a lot of people do not want to go for the small medium corporation. They, they do not want to go for the manufacturing industry, mm. right? That issue has to be solved. It's not only by the government uh, pressure or education sector. It has to be nationwide agenda for Korean youngsters to put their honest effort and uh, you know, tears and uh, sweat mm. in manufacturing sectors. A small medium mm. corporation has to be national agenda for those youngsters. Mm. Second. To That's a tall order to change the <laughs> aspirations of a whole generation of kids, isn't it? You're right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, one of the things I recommended to my students in Songgyungan yeah. University, mm. especially at the senior year, mm. hey, if you be hired by Samsung Electronics, Hyundai mm. operation, they are What a dream. Yeah. At the corporation history. Mm. But when you became 50s after 20 years, do you think Samsung and the Hyundai are going to be number one corporation in Korea and the global marketplaces? Mm. No. You're saying join something <laughs> that may be up and coming has got right. potential. Yeah. Okay. So if you put your, your energy at the small medium corporation at the early age, mm. you can have a fruit when you became 40s and 50s. Hopefully. Think about it. Yeah. yeah. Though, so that's the one thing. Second mm. is a sure. government regulation. Mm. Over the last uh, 10, 20 years, we have it's so many regulations yeah. yeah. for those uh, small medium corporations to be innovative. Mm. And uh, they cannot be come up with a new enterprise. Can, can you spirit. regulate innovation? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, President Park's government tried to motivate mm. innovation process. Yeah. But first thing they got to do is they take it out. Deregulate. Right? Deregulate. Yeah. Loosen the noose. Right. Yeah. But, you know, as you got the recent mm. report, mm. Uh, even though nine hours of talk with the President Bach, right. uh, over the last two months, we still have more regulation. Regulation, yeah. We're going against the habit of decades to deregulate. I think that's the one of the things uh, we need to solve as a nation. Mm. Third hope, mm. what the mm. Korean company can, you know, import a lot of uh, offshore manufacturing sectors coming into Korea or global corporation to mm. coming into Korea uh, to invest the manufacturing sector is a unification. North Korea mm. could be a very attractive base for manufacturing, yeah. Absolutely. Basis for the manufacturing. We have cheap labor down there. We have a good spirit and the work habit. Mm. We have a good communication skill. And a lot of infrastructure to build. And we have a good people who has a lot of experience mm. how to manage mm. those new industrial mm. sectors. Sure. So it could be a third hope for so, the Korean uh, industries. But we may not see it happen in our lifetimes. <laughs> could happen tomorrow morning, of course. We don't know. We don't I know. hope I can see those uh, pictures in my life. Yeah. Well, I hope so too. It'll be a fascinating story. But Dr. Kim, thank you very much for giving us a, a fascinating um, and very sobering interview. Uh, looking forward to the uh, some possible futures for the Korean manufacturing sector. Thanks for being um, on Bizline. Ah, thank you. You can donate money while effectively walking for exercise. The app of the week is Big Walk that may be worthwhile for those planning to walk for their health. When you run the app and begin to walk, 
it measures the distance you walk in real time using GPS and automatically saves 10 Korean won or a penny for every 100 meters you walk. As walking itself leads to donation, people can easily donate money in their daily lives. The money saved will be donated to disabled children who have difficulty walking. People in cities may be so used to it, they barely even notice it anymore. But noise pollution is everywhere. We're under constant attack from a barrage of sound that affects us both physically and psychologically. Now, a new technology has been developed that claims to combat sound with sound in order to turn down this relentless volume. But can it be realistically deployed in urban spaces? Well, let's listen carefully to our next segment. People today are overwhelmed with an excess of noise. Noise pollution can be extremely stressful, hazardous to health, and yet unavoidable. If we have to live with it, then we must learn to deal with it. One effective means to fight noise pollution is actually with noise itself, or rather with sound. Today, we will be looking into a noise-canceling system called Active Noise Control Technology. Whether we are indoors or out, we cannot escape noise. It disrupts peace and rest at home. Sound meters show that residential noise levels average 60 decibels. Highways normally hit 80 decibels, trains 110 decibels, and airplanes 150 decibels. Our ears can be seriously damaged if the noise goes beyond 130 decibels. Noise and vibration occurrences took up 81% of registered environmental disputes last year, suggesting how harmful and prevalent noise problems have become in our society. Various mitigation instruments have been used in walls, floors, and buildings to reduce the transmission of noise, but nevertheless had their shortcomings. Scientists arrived upon new methods of using sound to contain sound. The technology is dubbed as active noise control. 능동 소음 제어 기술이란 음파의 간섭과 흡수의 원리를 이용하여 소리로 소리를 없애는 기술이라고 할수 있습니다. 소음 신호와 크기가 같고 위상이 반대인 상세파를 발생시켜 소음을 없애는 기술입니다. The technology works with microphones picking up outside noise and combining it with a sound wave with an inverted signal proportional to the original waveform. It is meant to interfere with the intruding noise and reduce its volume when it's played through the speaker. Active noise cancellation is possible when two out-of-phase sound waves meet, creating a sound-erasing, destructive interference. Active sound control has been mostly used in surveillance submarines and aircrafts, but now it is applied for various commercial uses. The best commercial examples are headphones. This locally made headphone is installed with a microphone inside and outside to pick up ambient sounds. The active noise control inside the headphone cancels out lower frequency noises by creating anti-noise sound waves, allowing the listener to enjoy music without raising the volume. This venture company is active in developing industrial active noise control applications that can help reduce everyday noises. Ventilation hoods are essential in homes and restaurant kitchens, but the trouble is that they are too loud. 
An active noise control chip installed in the hood can quiet down the noise, bringing it down by 13 decibels. It is trickier to control irregular and sudden noises compared to the predictable and measurable sound of a ventilation fan. 소음이라는 게한 방향에서 들어온 소음은 절대 없습니다. 굉장히 많은 방향에서 들어오고요. 그 듣는 또 소음을 듣는 위치도 굉장히 여러 군데 존재를 하게 되어 있습니다. 그렇다 보니까 그런 기술적으로 이제 찾아내는 기술 자체가 굉장히 어렵고요. 그렇게 하기 위해서는 굉장히 많은 마이크와 스피커가 또 존재를 해야지만 됩니다. Research and development is ongoing in applying the active noise control system directly into seat headrests. The speaker in the headrest sends out anti-sound waves and is close to the ears, effectively blocking out external noises. The anti-noise headrests can be fitted into seats in cars, airplanes, and trains. Headrest 쪽이 굉장히 효과가 크죠. 효과 외과 왜 효과가 크냐면은 아까 좀뭐 말씀드린 부분이지만은 근접해서 지금 소리를 갖다가 지금 듣는 사람들을 위주로 소리를 갖다 없애기 때문에 그 효과가 바로 오게 돼 있습니다. 천 헤르츠 이하에서 굉장히 효과가 큰 장치입니다. 그래서 이게 도로 소음이나 이런 부분에 효과가 굉장히 큰데요. 그런 천 헤르츠 이하에서는 뭐 일반적인 소음을 갖다 봤을 때한 30dB 정도, 해서 20dB 정도까지 뭐그 정도의 소음을 갖다 줄여주는 효과가 나옵니다. The automotive industry is equally eager in developing anti-noise systems and are starting to apply them. Active noise controls proven effective in silencing low-frequency noises can help bring down engine noise by 10 decibels. The commercial application of the active noise control system has already become advanced and in wide use overseas. If the development cost can be reduced, its industrial and everyday applications may be limitless. 그래서 모든 지금 그 에어컨뿐만이 아니라 뭐 냉장고도 마찬가지고 이 청소기도 마찬가지인데 이와 같은 가전 제품 우리나라가 다른 나라에 비해서 우, 이 우위를 갖고 있는 가전 제품 기술이나 이런 곳에서는 가장 핫타픽이 소음과 효율입니다. 아직은 기술적이나 비용적인 한계 때문에 제한된 영역에서 사용되고 있습니다만 소음에 대한 관심이 나날이 증대하고 있고 하드웨어도 비약적으로 발전하고 있어 앞날은 밝다고 생각됩니다. According to the World Health Organization, about 120 million people around the world suffer from noise pollution. If active noise control becomes widely applied and integrated into our modern lifestyle, we may one day be free from noise pollution. As an author, one thing that keeps me awake at night is the worrisome trend that people are reading fewer and fewer books. They much prefer to fiddle with electronic devices. There is one upside to this trend, and that is the increasing access to electronic books. So let's look at a way in which your smartphone can put an online library into the palm of your hand. Libraries where shelves are filled with books symbolize the analog era. But along with the development of information and communications technology, they are making drastic changes that are beyond our imagination. The smartphone is turned into a library able to offer countless number of books ready to be read in your palm. ICT services also offer audio and video content. A library located in Seoul. With more services provided through mobile devices, there are more people making visits. It has become easier to borrow books through the application of ICT. After downloading this library app, library members only need to select the library that they have membership with. They can see whether or not a book has been checked out through their smartphone, make a book reservation, and extend due dates. 예전에는 컴퓨터로 홈페이지에 접속을 해가지고 원하는 책을 찾거나 아니면은 도서관에 와서 이제 사선생님들한테 이제 물어본다던가 그런 식으로 썼는데요. 앱을 깔고 나니까 이제 내가 어디에 있든 검색해서 제가 원하는 자료를 찾을 수 있다는 게 되게 좋은 것 같아요. Busy modern day people found it inconvenient to go to the library during opening hours to borrow books. To resolve such inconvenience, 
Libraries are now offering digital book lending services. Smartphone users can borrow a digital book and return it anytime, and it doesn't matter where they are. Libraries can be carried around, so to speak. 동대문구 정보도서관은 36,000여 점의 전자책을 보유하고 있습니다. 전자책의 경우 1인당 5권을 빌릴 수 있고요. 최대 2주간 대출이 가능합니다. 지금 올해 8월 기준으로 봤을 때 하루에 20에서 30여 권의 책이 대출되고 있고 한 월평균으로 봤을 때는 600에서 700여 권의 전자책이 대출되고 있습니다. Digital books which allows people to read anywhere and at any time best symbolizes what ICT service is all about. With the wide distribution of smartphones, people are turning to digital services while needs for paper-based books are dropping. The digital book market size in Korea has increased to a whopping 578 million US dollars last year from 196 million US dollars in 2010. With an increase of digital book readers, many libraries are improving their mobile services to allow better access to digital books. 도서관도 그런 모바일 유비커터스 패러다임 쪽으로 변화하고 있습니다. 그렇기 때문에 시공간을 초월한 서비스의 편리함과 도서관에 대한 접근성을 향상시킬 수 있다는 점이 많은 도서관 측에서 모바일 도서관 서비스를 제공하게 되는 요인이라고 보여집니다. Paper books are also evolving in the digital age. A mega bookstore in Seoul. This book may look ordinary, but once you make contact with your smartphone to the book, you'll instantly hear the contents as it plays an audio book. In early August, Media Changbi began a commercial service for a new type of book, adding a touch of ICT. Smartphones can recognize books without a separate device and can play back the book content digitally through audio or video. And this is made possible through the Near Field Communication, or NFC tags, attached on a book cover. NFC uses means of wireless communications between electronic devices, such as smartphones and mobile devices, when they are in close range. 종이책에 NFC 태그를 부착한 이후에 어, 스마트폰을 그 책에다가 접촉을 합니다. 그러면 스마트폰은 NFC를 읽어서 어떤 책인지 알아낸 다음 그 책과 연결되어 있는 오디오북이나 동영상 심지어는 전자책까지도 어, 읽거나 보거나 듣거나 할수 있는 서비스를 제공하는 것입니다. Since a smartphone is used to read or listen to book contents, there are many ways to enjoy books nowadays. For example, parents who don't have time to read books to their children all the time can use a digital reader, and those who are constantly busy can listen to a book even while on the go. The publishing company has made 364 books with such functions and plans to publish about 1,000 digital contents by the end of this year. 책을 읽는다는 거, 독서는 어떤 면에서는 좀 숙제 같은 개념이에요. 한번 시작하면 끝까지 가야 된다는 부담도 있고요. 그런데 다양한 환경에서 그거를 계속 잡고 있기는 좀 어려움이 있죠. 읽다가 듣다가 또 다시 이어서 읽다가 또 이어서 듣다가 할수 있는 그런 방식의 차이가 생기는 것이므로 더 많은 그 편리한 독서의 방법을 제공한 거라고 보시면 됩니다. Audio and digital books do not take a big portion in the overall book market in Korea. However, the publishing method is likely to change drastically to keep in steps with the fast changing digital environment. 과거에 비해서 종이책의 그 위상이라든가 비중은 상대적으로 많이 약화가 되고 있는 추세고 앞으로 그것이 또 가속화될 가능성이 높습니다. 아, 다만 이제 이를 대체 내지는 그 보완해 주는 것이 전자책 또는 이제 그 멀티미디어 북이라고 할 수가 있을 텐데요. 이러한 어떤 신성장 동력이 되는 어떤 그 새로운 분야에서의 약진을 바탕으로 해서 출판이 새롭게 이제 그 거듭날 수 있는 계기가 마련되지 않을까 생각을 하고요. 어, 최근에 서비스 되고 있는 혹은 이제 시도되고 있는 다양한 이런 그이 새로운 실험들이 어떤 그 새로운 독서 문화와 출판 문화를 만들어 나가는 데 있어서 새로운 또 자극제가 되지 않을까 그런 기대를 갖게 합니다. Although digital books won't be able to completely replace books printed on paper, but they do hold meaning in that digital books and ICT services will widen the basis for book reading methods. 
As there is more than one way of reading a book, people will likely spend more time enjoying books. Rumors have been reaching South Korea that the wages of some North Korean workers are now exceeding those of senior party officials. Now, is this just another wacky rumor from north of the DMZ, or could there be a grain of truth to it? Well, to answer this question, let's take a look at the wage system pertaining inside North Korea to see how things have indeed been changing. A worker earning more than a state employee perfectly makes sense in a capitalist country. But can you imagine that happening in North Korea, the world's last surviving communist and most heavily state-controlled regime? A party official, on average, earns 4,000 North Korean won a month, approximately 53 cents. But there are workers that are earning 100 times more than that. 돈을 많이 버는 기업소 같은 경우에는 근로자가 일반 북한 근로자에 비해서 100배 이상의 임금을 받는 이런 현상도 나타나고 있습니다. Big salaries are not the only surprise from North Korean workplaces that are usually connected with cheap labor and deplorable working conditions. Workers of this industrial complex are seen enjoying rich menu choice at their cafeteria and free time swimming in a pool within the compound. How are these luxuries of a capitalist society possible in North Korea? North Korean watchers say the Kim Jong-un regime has eased long-held tight state control over corporate activities and granted sovereignty in business management under new economic policy promoting growth of private enterprises. Corporate management is a concept that contrasts with strict state control over all corporate and industrial activities under a social economic system. It is actually the bedrock of capitalism where companies are free to plan business, produce and reward employees according to their performance. 예를 들어서 벌펜을 만들던 기업이 과거에는 벌펜 생산 계획을 줬는데 지금은 그런 생산 계획을 안 주는 거죠. 뭘 주냐? 구매으로 너는 뭘 생산하든지 간에 100만 원만 생산해라. 그러면 우리 기업은 뭘 가지든 뭘 하든지 간에 생산을 해서 그 액수만 맞추면 되는 거예요. 어떻게 해서라도 팔아서 그리고 지금은 거기서 국가 납부를 하고 나머지는 근로자들이 그 임금도 높여주고 그걸 복지에 다 돌리는 거죠. Earnings among North Korean workers could not differ under the collective manufacturing and state distribution system. Living on a meager income had been possible in the old days, when the regime uniformly distributed food and daily necessities to its people. But distribution became scarce and insufficient due to natural disasters, famine and international trade sanctions. People no longer could rely on the regime to feed and provide for them. Their earnings also were not enough to live on. As a result, state control has become meaningless. 쌀 1kg 가격이 현재 8월 초한 5천 원좀 넘는 이러한 수준으로 이야기가 되고 있는데요. 근데 또 평균 임금으로는 3천 원이라고도 이야기가 되고 있거든요. 평균 임금 해봐야. 쌀 1kg도 못 사는 그런 상황이라고 하면 어느 사람이 열심히 일을 하고자 하겠냐라는 거죠. 이런 식으로 방법으로 하니까 생산성이 안 올라가서 이 공장이 가, 다 멈춰 섰다라는 거죠. 그래서 이제 기업소에 대포 이러한 이제 경영의 이 자율권을 상당히 이양하고 있는 거고 그런 차원에서 이제 임금 상승도 허용하고 있는 겁니다. The uniform wage system has been broken down through the eased regulations on corporate management. Workers in highly productive enterprises now can earn decent salaries. That doesn't mean conditions for all North Korean workers have improved. 상당히 높은 그 임금을 허용했다라는 것은 사실 또 극히 극소수 기업으로 보셔야 될것 같아요. 북한에서 사실 잘 나가는 수출 기업이라고 해봤자. 광물 자원을 수출하고 있는 이제 그런 기업소들하고 그 다음에 이제 의류 위탁 가공 기업소들 
이런 이제 파트들인데요. 이런 기업소들이 전체 공장 내지는 기업소에서 그 비중이 작다라고 보시면 됩니다. 그래서 여전히 90% 이상의 대부분의 기업소에 소속되어 있는 노동자들은 평균 임금 수준에 하여 있고요. The work of capitalist mechanism has brought about consequences the state regime had vehemently tried to protect in its totalitarian community in the past. The unprecedented wealth gap is feeding corruption and collusion. Instead of working for a state enterprise that pays 40 cents a month, North Koreans prefer to pay kickbacks to officials and engage in buying and selling in illicit markets. 북한 전반 사람들이 다 국영 기업에 적은 거로 났지만 이름은 거로 났지만 시장을 통해서 다 상적 행위를 한다는 것이죠. 현금을 회사에다 일부 내놓기로 하고 돈을 버는 사람들이 있어요. 그런 식으로 장사를 해서 돈을 버는 거지 기업에 3천 원 가지고 살아가는 사람은 단한 명도 없죠. 다 굶어 죽었지. North Korea's shift to a market-oriented system was foreseen after private and illicit markets sprung up when devastating famines sent people to find means to make their own living. The grassroots activities have ended up affecting the official economic policy. 어, 현재 북한 내의 어, 이 시장 경제의 흐름을 어, 보면 어, 북한 당국의 입장에서는 어, 체제 우려 때문에 많이 막으려고는 하, 하지만 실제 이미 북한의 밑바탕에서는 시장 경제가 굉장히 확산이 되고 있습니다. 어, 장마당만 하더라도 전국적으로 300여 개로 굉장히 지금 확대가 되어 있고 이미 북한 주민들은 시장을 통해서 살아가는 이런 구조로 좀 바뀌고 있습니다. 그래서 이제는 북한 내에 불고 있는 이런 시장 경제의 바람은 어, 더 이상 Although state entities in name, companies are turning into more or less private enterprises seeking profit in management, as in market economy. Will higher productivity and profitable business activity help to fix the wrecked economy? 북한의 경제가 현재 다소 좀 좋아지고 있는 것은 과거에 워낙 경제 상황이 안 좋았기 때문에 거기에 대한 상대적 측면에서 약간의 어떤 그이 증가가 있는 거지 북한 경제가 근본적으로 어 성장하기에는 어렵지 않나 생각이 듭니다. 그래서 북한 경제가 어 실제적으로 어 경제 성장을 하기 위해서는 어 궁극적으로 어 국제사회와 협력하면서 개혁 개방의 길을 선택하는 것이 어 북한 입장에서는 경제를 지속적으로 발전시킬 수 있는 유일한 수단이라고 하겠습니다. Companies can now run independently and workers are earning more. We will have to wait and see whether these practices of market economy will lead to fundamental reform and opening of North Korea. And that's all we have time for on BizLine this week. But do join us again next week because Chuseok, Korea's most important annual holiday, is fast approaching. And Chuseok was when Koreans traditionally gave thanks for a successful harvest. Now currently, Korean fruits, notably apples and pears, are winning popularity in markets worldwide. How so? Why so? And how much so? We'll find out next week. But that's all for now. I'm Andrew Salmon. This was BizLine. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.